We're ready. I won't play the blues now. Well, it's about me. It's always about me anyway. And that's what blues singers are all about. They're all about me. Town there for about a week, haven't you? What have you been up to? Oh, I did Tasmania. Got blown out of there with the uh, the weather, but we had a great show down there. Yeah. And um, came here to do. I want to show in Ballarat on Friday, and then we do um, Caravan Club on Sunday and okay. music. Hey, what's that? <laughs> I like that sound. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty good, doesn't it? No, oh, oh, oh yeah. we're right. All muffled up. Wow, look, here's the sound. Hey! It looks pretty hot, doesn't it? <laughs> like an old Thunderbird. Hey, I know that guy. It's you a mate of mine, Tony. You know him? I know him. <laughs> Come on, he's the best guy for mate. Can you take me around the block or something? <laughs> Tony, this is a mate of mine, Kevin. Yeah, you how you doing, Kevin? Kevin oh, Bridge. Dallas Brooks hey, back in the day. Dallas Brooks. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember it well. Just yeah. like. Yeah, like, Melbourne's been good. Yeah, yeah it has. Always. One thing about Tony, he's always got good taste in music. He's got Dutch playing at the moment. Ah, oh, wow. You know all about Dutch, wouldn't you? Not what I you're going to do, you run out of hash, my baby. Well, not all about it, but I know <laughs> what you're going to do, you run out of hash. When, when did you first get the when did you first get to meet him? I actually can't remember, and I've been nuked going through the cancer, so I use that in a great excuse. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when you hear a guy that's got a Dutch accent, when he talks, but when he sings, he turns into the man from the Delta. You go, hang on, what's going on here? Yeah. You know, it's um, he was an authentic blues player and doing it like it was supposed to be done and like those, all those great originators did, you know? Yeah. So um, that's what struck me about, about Dutch. He was steeped in it, you know, steeped in the blues. How did he, how did he develop that? I well, mean, see, I don't know. It is from another spirit, from another time. <laughs> Drenched in the, the juice of the Delta. Yeah, because it's absolutely amazing when you think of it. I mean, how many Dutch blues players are there? That's what I playing, mean. Yeah, you know, they're playing Brunsy and a lot of soccer players. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, it's, it's just a, a unique thing, man, and that's the uniqueness is is something that you cherish, you know. Mm. I heard a story. It might have came from Dutch himself that you were playing a concert one day and you're singing this song and suddenly the voice came out of the audience singing it word for word yeah. and it was Dutch. Yeah. Do you remember that? <laughs> no, Probably not. <laughs> oh shit, I'm good on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, um, well, they must have dragged him up on stage or something. Oh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. Yeah. Well, you ended up doing a recording with Dutch too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we, a, unique, a unique thing which is, you know, direct to disc, which yeah, how they yeah. used to record before multi-tracks and before you could you could stop it and fix it or go back to the, the start of that song. But this, yeah. this one was you had to go back to the start of the whole side of like, you know, like the first track. Yeah. So that that was the that was a challenge. I mean, it was a hell of a challenge to do, but we, it turned out great. Yeah. And uh, I mean, Dutch was very much a traditionalist. Very. As you know, and yeah. you guys were sort of you know, it was a bit of a rocky yeah. side. Yeah. So how did that all work? The blues had a baby, and they called it <laughs> rock and roll, <laughs> and it just fitted so good. And and the tiniest little town in all of Australia will have a radio station with a blues show, and that person remembers the first time they saw Dutch Tilders. So, thank you so much for coming out tonight, Mulder. I'll try and kick it off in style. Jimmy Hendrix so had them too. From the 
Paris to Japan, the mother foreign lands and other people are being told that the blues had a baby and they called it rock and roll. You know, we you know, I got the call that they wanted that he wanted to do an album and call it that and it was uh, a Sonny Terry Brown McGee song and, and it just fitted that the fact that they drew me in was, was the rock and roll thing. So it was the marriage, you know. So um, it, it, you know, ethnically kind of thing, you know, it, it worked fantastic, you know. Um, you've obviously known Dutch for quite a long time because you played his tribute down at the Filbury Theatre a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, that was a great concert and, and it was just so great how all the people that love him come together and the musicians who respected him for so long came together to help and, and, and to celebrate, you know, the um, Dutch as himself before, before he, he left us, you know. And I won't be the last time for my angel's hand. What do you think Dutch's greatest influence was with respect to the blues scene here in Australia? Oh, Sonny Terry. You know, I think his style of yeah. thinking. Um, and, you oh, know, sorry, Brownie McGee. Brownie McGee, sorry, yeah. running around the wrong way. Uh, 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 yeah, sorry. And, um, so. So yeah, that's where I that's where I pegged it from. I mean, there's obviously other players in that style that that um, that, I, that I can't pull a name out of the hat, but yeah. uh, um, that that's where he was, you know. Mm. That's where he got it from, yeah. Yeah, because you um, for a while there did a purely blues solo set yourself. Didn't you? Yeah, I still do. Um, I've just incorporate a few classics, and but I've been trying to write in that. Uh, vein um, for that set of mine that I do with the old National 1930 guitar and play slide on it. So um, I, I, I try and come up with, with uh, new stuff, you know, because you can't keep doing Big Boss Man, but there's still the Big Boss yes, that right. runs the fucking world, <laughs> you know, and, and, and doesn't do it properly. And, um, and you know, the, the, the stock market and all that shit creates the seed of greed and I, I'm so against it. There's plenty of blues to talk about. Oh, absolutely. you know, it, it, it's not, you know, it's not just my baby left me. You know. Mm. Well, Dutch was, well, one, he was a guitarist, blues man number one, guitarist number two, and he also was a great songwriter. Yeah. Um, yet he never formally learned any of that. No, so neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> so what makes all that tick? Well, that kind of passion, you know, you 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 get stirred up by. You get stirred up by the music, you, and it takes you on a ride, so you go with it, you know? Um, you never know what's going to happen. Um, but we, the way the way a song happened between me and Dutch was, um, I had this um, guitar line, the slide line. Like this, right? And of course, when we got together, he said, well, you know, what, what have you been mucking around with? And I, So I pulled that out, and I started doing it, and he loved it, you know? Mm. And I, and I thought, well, I haven't got any further than, than this is it, you know. And, and, and so we just basically put a blues 12 bar thing to it with a nice rest in it. And Dutch came up with, with the he beat my heart lyric. Okay. So, so that's how it happened, you know, you, like a spontaneous kind of uh, meeting in the marriage of, of two ideas. Yeah. And, and that's basically, how, I guess, how most songs get written, you know. Mm. Well, it's the old blues had a baby. They named it rock and roll. That that is such a great thing because it's historical value, and and and, right. and, and, uh, and it's and it's depicting what happened, you know. Well, how hard is it to write a good blues song? I mean, Dutch had it pretty well nailed, but from your point of view, how hard is it? Uh, well, you know, they sometimes when they happen, they they seem to flow out. Mm. They seem to come through you. Um, it's not easy, put it that way. Um, You've got to be lucky, and you've got to have a passion to continue trying on something like that. That, that line, how I would have kept doing it, and I would have built something around it. But having Dutch 
do it was was like already done bang you know mm. and um and so that's why people get together to write because you can bounce off one another mm. and so someone with an idea getting a bit bogged down we go well guy can give you another point of view you know that's mm. that's a great thing was that Dutch easy to write with or yeah because you, it's, it's casual mm. not, like, not like when you go to America and they want you to go in a room and I want, I want yeah, well, 10 hits so before they come out <laughs> I mean I couldn't do that you know, I'd have to like the person first. <laughs> Unless you want to write a whole lot of hate songs. <laughs> That's good, we'll do that then. <laughs> yeah, no, Dutch, um, he was a special man, wasn't he? Definitely really? special and a gentleman too, mm. you know. He, um, he had a good sense of humour. Um, he was courteous. He had looked, you know, he was, he was a, you know, a gentleman. He was a gentleman of the blues, I thought, you know. Uh, did yeah. um, did he influence you in any way in the way you approached your music? Uh, yeah, I think because he took me back into into that um, that era, right. you know. Are we just blowing something? Yeah, <laughs> playing a bit of air. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, he he took me back and made me focus, and 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 you know sometimes you get away from things and you need a a re a re refresh. Yes. You, you know, and that buttons gets pushed, and and you go back and you go. You know, you, I might have got, gone back and done it and put like Howling Wolf on or Mighty Waters and, and you know, and, and play some of Dutch records just to get that feel uh, back in me, you know. Mm. So yeah. basically he inspired you to uh, look further into the music. Yeah, because at that time I wasn't actually doing an acoustic set. Right. And that, that helped me get onto my national, or, and because it used to be just in the lounge room and I never really used to play it at gigs, but uh, after doing that with Dutch I could, I could feel that that, that I had that the guitar egging me on too, <laughs> sitting in the corner. What are you doing? I'm sitting in the corner. You're not playing me, you know. And doing the thing with Dutch and it kind of lit the fire again. And, and now I dedicate a whole a whole set and, I, and, and sometimes do that song of Dutch's with me. You know, that, that beat, uh, you know, beat my heart, which is which is a beautiful thing. Um, everybody's got their favourite Dutch moments. Uh, what are some of yours? Yeah, well, I've, got, I've I've got that one about the studio. You're right, So I've done that, but. The, the, the one that, that was, was so emotionally up, uh, you know, had me somewhere I had never haven't been before to actually ring Dutch to say goodbye. Okay. It was, um, well, yeah, you usually ring something, I just give him a ring, you know. <laughs> and I'm going, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I, you know, this will be the last time I talk to this, this Dutch, you know, and I'm going, what am I going to, how am I going to, what am I going to, what am I, honey, hey, what? Or like that, you know. Yeah, that must be a difficult moment. And and when I rang him, he was like, uh, you know, you know, saying things like, "I'll see you at the next gig" and stuff. <laughs> and kind of to the point where Bobby, I started laughing and crying in the, in the same, in the same. You know, it's a similar emotion. You know, yeah. it, 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 instead of you got tears when you're, you're laughing. And my dad used to do that. He'd laugh and he'd start crying. Yeah, but you know, not blubber, but just laugh. It, it was like. And now I'm sort of laughing at myself of being so serious about it, but then again I'd be going, it is serious. <laughs> it was a quandary. It was like, and and you know, anyway, it was like, but it, it was great that I did do it because you get scared of doing it because you don't want to think, what am I going to do? You know. So, and the, the the happy moments that we had were on stage, definitely on stage. Like when we did the tour to um, push the album. I, re I remember one specific gig we did. It was um, Mwilumba. Yeah. And it's an old pub, it's since burnt down. Man, when we, we pulled up there, there were people hanging out the doors and windows. It was just oozing with a queue that come out of the mountains. And, and we got on stage and it was like the vibration. Oh, you, you know. There's a real energy there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what you would strive for at, at, at a gig. I mean, we're all bloody vibrating vessels in this holographic universe. Yeah. And, um, and, and music, you know, by grabs the vibration you know you you it, it, it's transferred through the air um, you go into a grand piano you put the loud pedal down on a grand piano and someone hits a note a note like say a or G, and that note in there will resonate without being picked it's a, it's a, it's the principle of vibration it's what they use when they on a sitar or an Indian instrument when you've got the, the, the scale that you're playing that the strings are tuned to that scale so every time you, you hit one of those notes, that little string underneath vibrates by itself. It just comes to the party. <laughs> it's amazing and, and so that happens when you play to people I and mean, everyone's a vibration. So um, so 
it's for, for real, you know, that's where people come out feeling good. Mm. You well, know? Dutch is up there looking down on us. If somebody yeah. came up to me and said, well, what did you leave? Well, what did you do down there? What did you leave behind? What, what do you think he'd say? He would say, I played my blues, I did my best, I, um, I loved, I loved doing it. I had a full life. Yeah. And indeed he did, didn't he? Yeah. He, he, he did it to the max. Yeah. And he followed his passion as we do uh, as musicians. And um, we get so much out of it. And we are so blessed with having that passion. And we're so blessed having people that love us doing that. And otherwise we couldn't because you've got to, you've got to pay for rent. <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to do stuff and it comes down to the norm, you know. Yeah. But um, to be off to have, do what you love doing is the, is the greatest blessing of all. And he had that and he did it. Fantastic. All right. Mm. Thanks, mate. Beautiful. Good to see you. Yeah, same there. Well, I'm a blues man. Singing a blues everywhere I go. I'm a blues man. I'm singing a blues everywhere I go. And I'm a whole lot of trouble. But now I guess you already know. Say that I'm lazy, I never get nothing done. Just play the party talk and have a whole lot of fun because I'm a blues man. I sing the blues everywhere I